Chair, Chair recognizes Ms. Lee. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses for your testimony. It's still surreal to be in this room on the Oversight Committee. Uh, in January 2023, our country has experienced multiple mass shootings and a lynching at the hands of police. And yet here we are, the very first hearing of the Oversight Committee to criticize critical unemployment benefits from a global pandemic. This isn't just politics for me. Before joining Congress, I, like many of my colleagues, served four years as a state legislator in Pennsylvania. Just one year later, we crashed head on into this global pandemic that, frankly, we were not remotely prepared to handle. Every single day, I heard over and over and over the desperate calls of folks unable to access food banks, people facing the risk of homelessness, folks literally contemplating suicide, unable to eat or work. Every call was a real Pennsylvanian, a real person whose literal lives relied on the same benefits my colleagues see fit to criticize this morning. When the benefits ended, were ended in September of 2021, there were 174,572 people receiving the pandemic emergency UC and 387,932 people receiving the pandemic unemployment assistance in the Pittsburgh metro area. The pandemic relief was literally the difference between life and death for my community and communities all over the country. So focused on the people impacted, I turn to you, Mr. Horowitz. Um, understanding 3.1 billion was secured in the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023 to protect and strengthen the federated UI system under the Department of Labor Inspector General. Can you tell us how these investments improve, could or could be used to improve the federated unemployment insurance system? Absolutely, thank you, Congresswoman. Um, and uh, you know, we've ha and we held hearings about the value of the unemployment insurance program and other programs to help communities, as you said, um, but also heard about the challenges that communities had to get the money to the right place. Um, first and foremost, the money needs to be used to modernize IT systems. It's different state to state. Some states are, have older systems than others, but it seems to me one of the first things that has to happen is the, the funding needs to be used to modernize antiquated state systems. Thank you. Um, I can certainly attest that ours was a system that was entirely ill-equipped to handle this. Uh, by March of 2020, I believe, almost a million Pennsylvanians uh, found themselves suddenly unemployed. Uh, with that in mind, I have the same question for, for Mr. Dodaro. Uh, again, how these investments uh, could improve the federated unemployment insurance system. No, I would echo the first comment that Mr. Horowitz made, that the IT modernization systems need to be put in place in each state. Now, each state has a different program. I mean, their eligibility requirements are different, so it has to be tailored systems. Secondly, though, I think there ought to be more data sharing or agreements made uh, on the part of the, of the states to work together. Mr. Horowitz gave an example before of a Social Security number, one number that was used by 29 states. That shouldn't be able to be happen in, with the use of modern technology. I also think that the Labor Department ought to try to uh, have states voluntarily implement fraud reduction uh, programs. I mean, there was fraud rate of about at least 4% in these unemployment programs before the pandemic. So there's been fraud in these programs for a number of years, and this, the requirement for agencies, to, federal agencies, to implement GAO's fraud reduction framework is for federal agencies, but it doesn't cascade down to the state level, which is something I think Congress ought to consider, and labor departments helping them have fraud prevention programs. They have to make sure that they're adequately staffed properly as well. The problem was they didn't, you know, we were at historic un and low, uh, low unemployment rates. The states had reduced their staffing systems, had old IT systems, not a prescription for success. And so I think they need to deal with those issues. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yell back.